The medical examiners believed they were about to begin a routine autopsy on the victim of a mysterious death. Though the circumstances were tragic, examiners didn't expect them to be criminal. But they soon found themselves face to face with homicide. The first indication of foul play came with a look at the skin below the victim's eyes, where bruises made a silent accusation. And as the blood drains away from those sites of injury, leaving the surrounding skin quite pale, then the area of bruising stands up like a beacon in the night. Bruises such as these come from lack of oxygen, most often when a victim chokes or is choked. Strangulation was a possibility worth looking into. The victim showed no external marks around her neck. But beneath the skin, the tissue damage confirmed Fillinger's suspicions. And of course, when we first got the body open, we found the evidence of uh, severe strangulation, a great deal of trauma in the neck. The mystery of Stephanie Rabinowitz's sudden death had been solved, and a homicide investigation had begun. Detectives Charlie Craig and Richard Peppel, along with prosecutor Bruce Castor, had their prime suspect, the victim's husband, Craig Rabinowitz. They questioned him in the presence of his attorney. When Charlie came back in and advised both Rabinowitz and the attorney, that Stephanie had in fact died from manual strangulation, the attorney jumped up and said, oh my God, she strangled herself. And both Charlie and I looked at the attorney and I said, I don't think so. The Rabinowitz marriage seemed picture perfect. What could have driven Craig Rabinowitz to kill his wife? Police obtained a warrant to search the house for some sign of a motive. While his wife worked as a lawyer, Craig had supposedly run a business from his home. He convinced a number of his friends to invest in his promising venture. But a search of the house showed no evidence of a business being conducted there. Detectives had almost given up when one of the officers found a plastic bag in a crawl space above a closet. The bag was filled with receipts and financial records. They revealed that Craig Rabinowitz had been living a lie. When we went through the bag, we found some pretty important items, including a list or a ledger. We also found other receipts from pawn shops, indicating that some jewelry had recently been pawned. And we also found receipts from furniture stores, the furniture that he had bought, apparently another woman. So during this whole case, he was pictured to be this loving, happy, devoted husband. And in this bag, we found otherwise. A forensic accountant skilled in deciphering complex financial transactions reviewed the records. He found that what Craig had called a business was in fact a con game. He'd swindled his investors and convinced his trusting wife to remortgage their home. He then spent the money not on business, but to support his secret life. Credit card bills totaling $54,000 came from a single location, a strip club in Philadelphia. He'd been seeing one of the dancers there, showering her with gifts. At the time of his wife's death, Craig was hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. Desperate for money, Craig had taken out two insurance policies, each for one and a half million dollars. One was for his own life, the other for his wife. In a ledger found in the attic, Craig had calculated his net worth in the event his wife died, proving the crime was premeditated. After collecting on the insurance and paying off his debts, he'd have $1.2 million to spare. At the end of his rope, Craig turned on his unsuspecting wife and strangled her to death. He filled the bathtub hoping to create the appearance of an accidental drowning. 
then he called the police. It seemed like such a simple plan. According to Charlie Craig, far too simple. A lot of people said to me, you know, this guy must have seen this in a movie or read it in a book. Well, as it was coming close to trial, that kind of stuck in my mind. And I got the photos back out because I remember there was some book that had something to do with death. A book on Rabinowitz's desk had looked out of place when police searched his home. The author claimed that few deaths are followed by an autopsy. Craig Rabinowitz was a con man. When he learned this information, that only 13% of the deaths are autopsied, Craig Rabinowitz was playing a con. He was playing the odds when he learned that information, that the odds were dram dramatically in his favor that Stephanie wouldn't be autopsy. But an autopsy had been performed, exposing Craig Rabinowitz as a con man who'd gotten in too deeply. For murdering his wife, he was sentenced to life in prison without parole.